Hello, today we're looking at the Lab 2 solution. So just like the last lab, this is very much like the uh, ensuing quizzes and exams that you're going to have. So make sure that you're very comfortable with everything you see in here. So starting off on sheet one, this is a payment problem. So we're going to use Excel's PMT function. If you need particular help with this function, you should certainly view the PMT videos. I'm going to do this as fast as I can because this is a long workbook and this is just something you verifying what uh, hopefully you've already done. All right, so I'm going to start here in cell E4, head over to formulas, financial, and we're looking for PMT. So uh, rate, that means I'm going to point to the rate right here. Notice the word monthly. Monthly means 12, so I'm going to divide by 12. Uh, N per, that is years, and I'm going to multiply that by 12. You will see other examples, some places where they multiply it out and they just write 120 in there. It's not a good idea. I mean, you can do it, but I wouldn't advise it. And PV is the amount of the loan. I click OK, and I get something like that, and that seems like a reasonable value. So another financial, PMT. You can write these out by hand, but I'm just not going to do that because I figure where you're at probably in the class right now is wanting to see me using this dialog box launcher. That being said, I'll write one out by hand. All right, so equals PMT, the first argument is the uh, rate divided by 12. The next argument is the time in years times 12. And the last part is the amount. Notice I separated those with commas. All right, on to the next one, which is a goal seek. Now, this is one of the things that sometimes people struggle with. In order to do a goal seek, you have to have a function in there first. So here, we're going a different direction. I'm not trying to pay off a loan. I'm saving up money over a course of years. So I'm saving up $50 a month at a 7.5% interest rate over 15 years. So I'm going to click in cell B6. I'm going to get started with a future value function, which is FV. I'm going to point here, divide that by 12 because the word monthly is in there. Here's my years times 12. And the amount is that. All right, at this point I get a little bit sad because I wanted a million dollars and I realize I'm only going to have 16,555. Now I want to use Excel to help me figure out how I can get to a million by changing the years. Right? I mean, I could guess and check this. This is not the idea. Right? If it was 30, it'd be that. But that is going to take some time. So instead, I'm going to use the data tab. What if it's analysis? Goal seek. So B6 is the cell I'm currently in, which is good. I want to change that to 1 million dollars at six zeros by changing the years. Now pump the brakes for a minute. This isn't going to work out if I do it like this. Notice that this is a negative number as a, uh, so it's red. It's got parentheses. So I need to make that negative one million dollars. If you want to see how it works out wrong, go ahead and do it, but I'm not going to do it. I click OK. Numbers spin around for a minute. I click OK and it says something about like 65 years, which seems pretty reasonable. Got pound signs. Anytime that you produce pound signs, you have to widen the cell. Whether it's an explicit instruction or not does not matter at all. I mean, you can make the font smaller, I guess, uh, but I do want you to address it. So, right, it was pound signs because a million is a lot bigger than 16,000. All right, on to a group of if functions. So we want to insert a function that will return the word under if the player's total score is 215 or less. Otherwise, return over. Or less is kind of an important thing here. So I'm going to head up to the top. Notice the pound sign there. This is kind of an interesting one. You might be wondering, well, why did I give you a workbook that has pound signs in it? Well, I didn't. I utilize what I like to call the 100% test. Notice we're at 120% zoom. If you zoom back to 100, it's fine. So it's not a real problem. If your workbook displays properly at 100%, you're good. All right, so I'm going to head over to formulas, logical, if. If that score is less than or equal to 215, I say under, otherwise I say over. And I get that and I feel handle it and it looks like it didn't work, but it did work. You can tell right there it changes where the scores change. All right, I'm going to be picking up the pace now. So here we're doing uh, under 72 for round three and uh, so under it's not less than or equal to and it's winner or not winner, so under 72 for round three. So I'm going to point to round three, under 72. That means winner, otherwise not winner. 
And one of the things I talk about in my videos on ifs is there's many ways to set these up. I like to make sure the first one's correct, and then I scan down, make sure the first not winner is correct, and looks like it was the case. On to LPGA 3. So this is a different kind of uh, scenario, and so one of the comments I've made over the last couple weeks is that you have to be good at ifs, because pretty soon we're going to be doing things like this. And this is built on top of the if function, so if you can't put an if function together, you've got close to no chance on, on these. All right, so I want to insert a function that will return the average total score for players who scored under 72 in round one. All right, so it's like an average, and it's like an if, and it's called an average if. So that's going to be more functions, statistical, and I always use the S functions. There's average if, average ifs. Technically, I could use this here. Sam would like you to use this more often than not, but this is the better function, so I'm going to use this one. All right, so what column do I want the average of? I want the average total score. So I'm going to feed that in. Criteria range. So I care about people who did well in round one. So round one's my criteria range. And less than 72. So it's like a half inequality. Half of it's there, half of it's there. So all the cells in F, in column F, that are less than 72, we want to include them in the average. Now if you're like uh, not comfortable with this, there's plenty of practice and there's some help videos that I posted on the subject. I know this is the thing that you submit for credit this week, but this is not the starting point. This is one of the more difficult things we tackle this year. All right, so I get something like 208. Sounds reasonable. On to LPGA 4. So I want to find the sum of the winnings for all players who scored less than par in round 3. So it's a similar question, but, but I want a different column, and I want a sum here. So you'd probably think more functions, statistical, sounds like something called a sum if. Notice I don't find that. Sum and sum if are under math and trig, which is pretty annoying, but they are. So I go sum ifs. I want the winnings. So sum range is going to be winnings. Um, less than 72 in round three. So my criteria is round three. And I want less than 72. And this is, I have no idea whether that's correct, except that I've done this problem a million times. Uh, it's correct. All right. So now we are on to the lookup problems. So I've got these grades here. And I want to translate them into letter grades down here. So when you want to take a score and you want to translate it into, or a number, and you want to translate it into another value, it's a lookup problem. So there's H lookups and there's V lookups. This table is vertically oriented, so that's a V lookup. So lookup and reference, V lookup. I want to look up that value in this table, F4 to make it an absolute reference, and I want column two, right? This column here. This is column one, this is column two. Again, this is one of those things, if this is a foreign concept to you, then it means you know, I'm pretty certain you didn't do the practice workbook, which you absolutely need to do on the subject. Right? And there's a lookup. You can see it translated scores into grades. Now we're going to do some count ifs, and I'm going to do a cheat on this one, just because uh, in the interest of time. The first one's going to be, quote, kind of normal, and the rest I'm just going to cheat because I can. All right, so I want to count the number of A's. So I'm not going to type in something like 6 because that's not what I'm asking for here. I it's a count F. I want to count people who meet a certain criteria. So I'm going to head into more functions, statistical, count Fs. Criteria range. So I want to count people in this column who met the criteria of A. Notice I'm referencing it. You could type in A like that, but uh, it's not easier. Right, and that worked. So I'll do it one more time the hard way, and then I'll show you kind of a cool trick. Now on a test, I wouldn't need you to do any cool tricks, but Sometimes I like to show them. So there's my criteria range. Notice the criteria range doesn't change for anybody. So if you're thinking, hmm, could I do an, uh, a fill handle out of this, an absolute reference? Well, it turns out here you can. My As I fill to the right, I don't want that to slide. But how can I come up with a fill handleable criteria? Well, this just so happens that it's going to go from left to right. And if I write that, Nothing different, but it is now fill handleable, which is kind of cool. All right, so as I filled, these values slid over. That did not because it was absolute reference. All right, on to salaries. So here's where I think things start to get interesting. So I want to figure out how many physicians there are. What I am not going to do is count one, two, three. I am going to realize, well, that sounds like a count function with a criteria, which is a count f. I'm going to go count Fs. Right, so criteria, so what's the determining column here? Well, it's job title. 
and I'm looking for people who are physicians. And I want to, uh, okay, so I, sorry, I, even I make mistakes on these ones sometimes. For account, there's only two call, criteria maybe. For all the other functions, you're gonna have three, right? There's no sum column here, it's just a criteria. How many physicians are there? There are four. Now this one's a little more normal, I guess. Say so we want an average salary, so that's gonna be average ifs. I want the average salary where the job title is physician. And I get something like that. Total of the medical assistant salaries, that's a sum ifs. And remember that one's in here. So I want the sum of the salaries. I don't know if you can tell, but I read them pretty carefully because even though I made the worksheet, it's pretty easy to put the wrong column in the wrong place. That being said, I mean, I may have, may have done it even when I'm trying. And all right, so that's that sheet. On to golf. So now we're talking about subtotals. Subtotals is kind of an interesting concept because it's just it's not really related to anything else, I don't think. So I want to find the sum of the winnings by country. So step one in finding a subtotal, as I mentioned in the practice workbook and the videos on the subject, first thing you got to do is sort. I like to sort with filters because it's easy. Uh, so the thing that you want to group them by here is country. It's usually preceded by the word by. So I go in here. I don't care how you sort it. I really don't. A to Z, Z to A, they both serve the same purpose. Now, once that's done, you can do a subtotal, which is under the data tab and it's subtotal. So at each change in, that should really say grouped by country. I want the sum of the winnings. So sum winnings that just happen to be correct. I do that and you can see how this is useful. So Canada won that much money, Japan won that much money. That's the kind of data you might want to find. It's kind of equivalent to a bunch of sum ifs, but instead of writing several formulas, I just did that. All right, I had to pause it for a second. Hopefully you won't even notice. So that was golf, and on to NASCAR one. So this is a filter problem. So I wanna, only wanna see the top 10 drivers by money, so I'm gonna apply filters to the range. Notice that I'm not doing something like this. I just click once in the data. And they don't always go to the right place, but they usually do. And I wanna see top 10 by money, so I wanna filter on money. I'm gonna head into number of filters. I'm gonna go to top 10, and right there's top 10. Notice that I can flip it to bottom and 20 or whatever I wanted. If you just went in there and checked boxes, uh, you'd probably get it wrong. Use the number filters. Here's another one. So we want to see the bottom 20. So again, apply filters. There's points. And I want the bottom 20. So I'm going to head in here. Just checking boxes can get you into trouble. But here it would work. Notice I don't see bottom 20, but I do see top 10. And I flip that to bottom. I spin that up to 20. This is a long workbook with a lot of skills in it. Um, so if you're feeling underprepared for this lab at this point, wondering, you know, how are you supposed to know how to do these things, probably means that you haven't been putting in the time outside of the assignments. I can't emphasize enough that everything in here, there's a practice book uh, associated with it and a YouTube video, at least one. All right, so I'd also like to point out, notice my instructions got hidden. Well, that's just kind of unavoidable. They just happened to go through rows four, five, and six, and rows four, five, and six are kind of gone so you can kind of fix that by clicking on the box or you can resize it I don't care uh, whatever you want to do that being said when I write your tests if I'm gonna have you filter it I usually have you filter it last so the instructions don't run away from you all right NASCAR 3 can you sort the list to see uh, sort it by driver name and display only the top five in the polls well here's the thing it is already sorted by name but if it makes us feel better I can click that button notice that, that indicates that it is sorted or you could sort it that direction. I guess it doesn't really matter. Just sort it on one column. I, w I was just trying to use, have you using filters on multiple columns here. And I want only the top five in the polls. So these are polls. Jump on over here, top 10, scroll that down to five. Now this one's kind of interesting because there's more than five people. Why is that? Well, it's because several of them tied for last place, right? There's a bunch of people with two. And the last one is this one. So we're going to do a header, and this is kind of an exercise in grouping sheets. So the interesting thing about headers is if you go here and you put a header on this sheet, it's only on this sheet, which is usually fine, but uh, I just, it's, like, it's hard to come up with an example of where you can group sheets. So if you right click on a tab 
say select all sheets. Now everything you do is going to be done to all the sheets. You can cause a ton of havoc um, if you're not careful with this. So I'm going to say, but this is fine, right? It's just the header. I generally don't get too carried away with this because it you could cause some trouble. All right, and to ungroup them, I should just click on another sheet and voila, I'm done. So that was the lab, tons of skills in there. Um, this isn't just a Praxis exercise of what we're working on this week. It was to a large degree, but it was also a whole bunch about last week as well. This lab right here, I would say at the point where you could go through this without any problems at all and you knew what you were doing and why you were doing it, there's a good chance that you'd probably do pretty well on our midterm exam, which is coming up soon. But on that same note, if you were going through this and there's some things in here and you know that you don't know how to do them, or some things that you're feeling really shaky with, those are things that you need to get addressed because there still is time. Depending on when you're watching this video, there's at least probably a week, maybe two. Um, so notice that everything in here is, is, this is basically a collection of what I think are the highlights of the course up to this point. All right, so thanks for watching. Um, I do expect you to fix your lab if there's anything in here that was wrong. And if I made a mistake in the video, why don't you let me know that as well.